Hello, good morning, and welcome to Inside EVs. Today we have a BMW X3 30e, the plug-in hybrid X3. We're going to go for a drive, talk about this car, talk about some of its plug-in range, and just talk about plug-in hybrids in general, because I feel like the overall category of plug-in hybrids don't get enough reviewing coverage, and I'm curious what you guys think, because I've noticed some huge differences with PHEVs, and some of them are really weird, and this might be one of the weirdest. So let's go for a drive. Okay, you join me inside the X330e, and the first thing I wanna go over is the price. This car, spec'd the way it is with M Sport, which is like a styling package and some bigger brakes and suspension and stuff. Uh, and then this really nice Cognac Vernasca leather. Uh, this one's 65 grand. Now, this is a plug-in hybrid with a large enough battery to qualify for a tax credit. And you actually get a $5,800 federal tax credit. You know, full battery electric vehicles typically with a large battery get $7,500. This one's not far off. So that is good. And if you compare the regular X330i, which is the gas equivalent to the plug-in hybrid, but you factor in the tax credit on the plug-in hybrid, this is actually, nearest makes no difference, the same price. So it's kind of like, why would you buy the normal one? Just buy the, buy the plug-in hybrid, uh, especially if you're going for all-wheel drive. But I wanted to do some full in-depth range testing. Unfortunately, the charge port on this car actually got stuck closed until this morning, which is when it goes back. So I figured, let's go for a drive and just talk about plug-in hybrids because it's a topic that is pretty heated uh, between our team here at Inside EVs. Some of us like them, some of us hate them, some of us own them. And, um, oh man, it's such a controversial topic whenever we do a plug-in hybrid video video you guys some of you love them and you think it makes sense some of you don't so before we get into all of that let's talk about the x3 now i have a setting in this car where i have it set to start up in max e drive mode which is what we're in now which means i can put my foot all the way to the floor to the kick down switch and it will not kick on the combustion engine which is great now if i push the pedal past the little detent at the bottom the kick down switch then it fires up the four cylinder engine and we're off. Um, this one has a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine that is turbocharged and direct injection, direct <laughs> injected. And this is BMW's B46 Turbo 4 that they put in everything. It is a step, specially adapted version for plug-in hybrids though. Um, this is not a, a, uh, <laughs> a petrol channel, not a combustion channel. So we're not gonna get too far into that two liter motor. We'll stick to the electric components. And what do we have? Well battery pack is about a 12-ish kilowatt hour. I think the high side of 12 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack installed in this X3 and usable is 10.8. That's pretty good. However, at a full charge right now, it's predicting 11 miles of range and it's also 27 degrees outside. Now, I'm trying to do this series where we do cold weather, real world city PHEV range tests. And I wanted to do that with this car. Again, I don't have enough time to do it properly. Um, but I think that would be kind of interesting just to like compare all PHEVs in terms of range. Now, this car, you can drive around in electric mode easily. Some PHEVs, I'm looking at you, Volvo, you can, but you have a limited power. This one, you put your foot down and it's not RAV4 Prime Fast, but it's not that much slower. Look, we're already doing 55, 57. Like, no question, could you merge on the highway and cruise uh, up to, I think, 85 miles an hour in full electric mode. That's pretty neat. Um, but of course, you'll be chewing through that 10.8 kilowatt hour usable battery pack very quickly at those speeds. So X330e, this particular one, price, get ready. It's a big one. $65,000 the way this particular one is spec. It's an M Sport, you know, media vehicles always just have everything tacked onto them. Uh, so it's an M Sport. It has I would say the worst steering wheel ever fitted to a car. It's so chunky and meaty. Um, a lot of people like that. I actually like a thin spoke steering wheel. Now I've owned multiple BMWs and M cars as well with the chunky wheel. Oh, and every time you say BMW, this uh, voice assistant comes on, of course. Um, and it's all pretty interesting, but 
I have not been in one of the modern, modern BMWs like within the past two years since this car. And man, is there a lot to take in. Uh, I've gone on my one of my own channels, uh, it's Out of Spec Reviews, and I've talked a little bit about this car as a whole. So if you're interested in more in-depth comparing older BMWs to new stuff, all of the settings, I'll have a link in the description to Out of Spec Reviews where you can see this car talking as a whole. Here at Inside EVs, we're just talking about the electric side. Wow, and it moves off the line. That guy in the truck got on it and we just took him. So great electric torque off the line, but this comes with a big but <laughs> by the way, it is electric all wheel drive as well. So all four wheels are driven, uh, but it shifts gears in electric mode. So what that means is the electric motor is ahead of the transmission. So you put your foot down and it goes, and then it, there's a pause and then it shifts and then it goes again. And it's the weirdest sensation because, you know, I think Taycan's really the only electric car I've driven, battery electric vehicle, I've driven with a transmission and it only shifts one time and in daily driving, if you just have it in normal mode, you never feel it. This is shifting like it would in a combustion vehicle, shift, 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 shift at an eight speed. So you feel these pauses and it's very odd. Now the 330E does this, I believe. A couple other BMWs are set up the same way, it makes sense. Um, and I guess it kind of bugs me a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't like that. <laughs> There's no way around that. Uh, you know, especially when the transmission's stone cold and you're driving in electric mode. Like I took this car to get coffee yesterday morning. And yeah, like I put my foot down, it downshifted, went up like four miles an hour and then upshifted. Like it should not do that. Um, yeah, and if the transmission when it was cold, it was a little clunky and these ZF transmissions are awesome, uh, but it just doesn't work for electric mode. So enough complaining about the shifting in electric mode. I don't like that. Um, we should other talk about the regen as well on this car. So off throttle regen is really strong. So you can drive around almost one pedal. Guys, take a look. It's a Mitsubishi iMeve. Only about 1,800 of those came into the US. There's a nice blue example. I know of two in town. That's the first of the blue I've seen. So now I guess that's three I know in town. And uh, I hate them with a passion, but I also love them because it's the first mass produced highway capable electric vehicle. What a neat find on our little drive around here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, back to plug-in hybrids. Uh, what was I doing? I was complaining about the shifting. That's annoying. The overall power is great. Uh, and then we need to look at the value of this car. So I mentioned this one's 65 grand. It has every option available. Harman Kardon, Driver Assistance Plus, so it's got active steering, lane keeping, the whole bit, everything you could want. And it's all okay. I think BMW's active driving assistant in this car is a little bit behind others. It kind of lags when you're in traffic, like you get these big gaps between the car in front of you and then it speeds up by the time the other person's hitting the brakes and then your X3 slams on the brakes and it's all a little wonky and jerky. And I did another video on this car where if you put in a destination in the navigation, it will prioritize when to use the electric battery or the combustion engine for most efficiency. Uh, you'll notice things coming up on the screen. If you can see it, that's because this car has gesture control so I can turn up and down the volume. I can go next track. I can say go home and you can basically have it do um, you know, tons of different gestures remotely. Not good for me because I talk with my hands all the time. <laughs> it's constantly going off. I'm setting it off accidentally. Uh, back to price. 65 grand has everything. Uh, base though, they're in the $49,000, $50,000 range. It's about $5,000 more than the non plug in hybrid X3 30i X Drive, uh, which X Drive's all wheel drive and BMW speed. So if you need an all-wheel drive X3, you're already paying up over the, the rear-wheel drive configuration. And then at that point, you may as well just get the plug-in hybrid and take the tax credit. I think it actually works out to be cheaper, but mirrors makes no difference. So you're going up from low 200 horsepower range to 288. This car is not slow, pretty, pretty sprightly actually. Um, I have noticed that the gas engine, when it's cold, does not give you full power, which is awesome. So you're not overstressing it if you accidentally hit the kick down switch. It doesn't go full boost, full revs immediately. It lets it warm up for a second. So you're not going to have, I would say, longevity problems with that engine. I think BMW's tuned that well. Some of the Volvo products do boost up a little bit more quickly than I would like on a cold, stone cold four cylinder engine, the plug in hybrids. Um, so you get all these things and it's kind of like if you're getting an X3, just get the plug-in hybrid. And in that case, 
I think this car makes sense because you plug it in at home, you just plug it into a wall outlet, it'll full charge overnight. You don't need a level two station. You can get one if you want, but it's only 16 amp charging anyway. Um, it's not a huge battery, so just get a wall outlet, plug it in whenever you're not using the car, and then you're driving around in electric mode. Look, we haven't even kicked on the combustion engine once during this drive, and honestly, there's no need to. Cruising down the highway, you don't really feel this thing switch from electric to gas. It's very smooth. The driveline components are great. The only annoyance is, again, the shifting of gears. But the overall power in electric mode is great. And this brings me to a conversation about PHEVs in general. And PHEVs in general vary widely as to how they're integrated with the car, um, how their systems work together, and how they drive for the driver. I mean, we've seen PHEVs with like eight miles of range, looking at you, Mini Countryman SE. Um, and then we've seen PHEVs with like 50 miles of range, Polestar 1, RAV4 Prime, uh, huge range numbers on those cars. So it's kind of difficult just to say a PHEV is X. And I've noticed this because I've been driving a lot more PHEVs last year in 2020 and I'm so torn on them. Part of me wants to say it's the worst of both worlds. You're getting a worse combustion vehicle uh, because you know when the battery's out, you're hauling around the battery pack, you get worse fuel economy, worse performance, heavier weight, uh, potentially more complexity. And then the other side of me is like, it's the best of both worlds because you get a faster acceleration time when the battery's topped up, you get the ability to drive around town electric and emission free from tailpipe emissions, you get, uh, which is great for local air quality, you get, uh, you know, just, just more fun things to plug in, like I love charging and finding charging stations, so you gain all these extra benefits, and I, man, I'm so torn as to whether or not I like them or not, and I think I've come down to the conclusion that I only like them if they're used in a performance setting. So basically, if I have to buy a car, uh, I would only want to buy the plug-in version if it's faster or drives better because I love electric for the, for the performance aspects, for the instant acceleration, for the huge torque curve. So that is where it comes down to Volvo. For me, I love their plug-in hybrids because they're the fastest ones. It's the best one. So why would you buy the slower one? You just get the plug-in hybrid and all the performance. In that aspect, works great. Um, in this aspect here at BMW, it's really the mid-trim. You get the X330i non-X drive, which is just this engine rear-wheel drive. Then you get the X-Drive, which is all-wheel drive. Then you get the plug-in hybrid, which is this one, the step up. Significant power, but again, the tax credit offsets the uptick in price. So I don't know why you would buy a 30i unless, of course, they lease out better. I'm sure they do. This car has really loud turn signals, by the way, so I'm not going to use them in traditional BMW driver form. Um, and then you get the X3 M40i, which is significantly more money, and that one is very disingenuous to me because I'm such a BMW purist that I don't like the M40 things that they have or M50 in the bigger ones because it's not a real M car. Uh, they claim that BMW has breathed some M stuff on them. I've driven them and they just feel, that guy just went through a hard red light. Um, and, and I feel they're a little bit lackluster. They're just like trying to be sporty, but then when you actually drive it hard, it feels mushy and rubbery. And then you have the X3M. And I would love the X3M. The only thing that I don't like about the X3, and the X3M has different seats, um, is, is this chunky steering wheel. I'd want to swap it for the thinner one. And the seats in this M Sport are unbelievably uncomfortable. And it's not that the support bad is bad or anything like that, but at the bottom, there are these side bolsters that stick up. And the way I like to drive is like with my knee up against the driver's door. And uh, by doing that, the side bolsters are jamming into my legs. And I actually have bruises driving it around after a trip to Denver and back about 150 miles or so. So I'm not falling in love with this X3. And I've not fallen in love with most plug-in hybrids in general. And um, I still think a battery electric vehicle is better. Uh, in almost every scenario, and I still think a combustion vehicle is better in almost every scenario for efficiency, comfort, cost, you know, complexity, longevity. And this is what it comes down to at, at Inside EVs on YouTube. What do you guys think? And for our testing procedures of PHEVs, some of them I've been extremely surprised by. This car, objectively, is pretty good um, in terms of power and um, 
drivability in electric mode. Like I had this car in full deep snow in electric mode, traction control off, and it lets it spin all four tires and it's dynamic and it handles really well um, uh, in the snow, I should say, from an all-wheel drive perspective. I actually don't enjoy this car on the pavement as much because to me, a BMW should be sporty. Nothing about this car is really that sporty. Um, so plug-in hybrids in general, I think we need to do a city range test. It's very important, of course, because that's where plug-in hybrids are best optimized. And then we need to do a highway range test. So we've done this with RAV4 Prime and it worked out really well. And it's interesting to see the difference. And we've also done it with XC90 Recharge, actually. It's interesting to see the difference in city and highway range. Some PHEVs are totally unaffected and they actually almost match their city range cruising down the highway, which has just blown me away. And some of them, as I would expect, just tank on the highway, get no range. Uh, and we try and do these tests as scientifically as possible and loop style tests, negating any elevation or wind uh, changes throughout the drive. Um, so so these are these are the questions I have. I'd love to hear what you guys think about PHEVs. Definitely comment down below. We read every comment and let us know what you think about the X3 as well. I think if you are in the BMW leasing thing and you just get a new one every three years, sure, why not get the plug-in? It's better than the normal one, no question. But the X3 in general, if you're a BMW fan, just feels, mm, I don't know, soft it's lost its mojo <laughs> i think bmw in the non-m versions like i had the m8 competition on track recently and that was very capable extremely fast tire shredder i actually did shred a tire um sorry to our friends at motor one about that one but uh that car also felt kind of like this just rubbery and soft and not bmw as i would want so yeah, PHEVs, we're going to keep covering them because it's an interesting topic. The cars overall are getting better. The plug-in hybrids with CCS fast charging make no sense to me, but I love how weird that that is. Polestar 1, GLE 350DE in Europe is another one that comes to mind. Uh, so many different cars with this. And uh, yeah, pretty neat. X3, we've driven, again, full electric mode. We still have more than half battery capacity, so you could absolutely do your daily errands around town. Plenty of power, of course. We're not even gonna kick on the combustion engine because this is inside EVs. You guys don't care about that two liter. And uh, honestly, it's not, it's a great engine, but it's not, uh, not anything too exciting. Doesn't shoot any flames or make any good noises. So let's, uh, let's wrap up the video here. A general conversation about why PHEVs infuriate me uh, in the way that I don't know what to think about them. Uh, some of them I love, some of them I hate. I guess that's the way it goes, uh, but I still have yet to make up my mind whether they are the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds. I've yet to see one that really fits into either category yet, and I think the RAV4 Prime makes the best case for the best of both worlds scenario, and I'm trying to think worst of both worlds, Mini Countryman SE maybe, even though I kind of like that. But yeah, hard to say. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully you like these little quick impromptu, short 15, 20 minute videos that we just talk about topics. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.